I wouldn't uh, insist too much on this 10 to the 11th, uh, uh, since, I mean, uh, there are different regions in the brain and it makes sense to, to look at them separately. Um, there are simpler systems, I mean, you can study insects which show interesting behaviors with mature neurons, so and mathematicians are interested in having a large number because that's closer to the asymptotic limit, but it's necessary uh, relevant for, for some uh, networks at least. And the, the second point is we are losing neurons every day and we, we function reasonably well from one day to the next. So uh, and the detailed connectivity and the precise number of, of uh, uh, vertices can't be that fundamental for the, the, the way the, the system works.
could correlate to the other, and how much actually information is the same. So this is this is a question that we are very interested in, actually. And brain context is a, a great one. So, please. Uh, I'd say the, the actual network is very important. The physical connection, if you have a good prolongation of the disorder, that disorder is going to affect the actual network. And of course, there is a lot of resonance within the brain, which we talked about. Somehow, the information find its way through alternative ways. Uh, unless, of course, we cut all possible connections, but generally it finds a way. So, well, the word is affecting the physical connections in the brain. Surely one should understand how those physical parts are interacting with each other. So I'd say, yeah, it might be important to understand the brain uh, at a higher abstraction level, which you don't have to understand its physical properties. But when it comes to disorders, we want to find the anatomopathological correlation Surely want to see how they are connected to each other. We, we can't just leave that as a okay, less important. Maybe less important for simplification. We still need that. Yeah. Maybe, uh, no, 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 I don't want to say that. Don't yeah. want to say that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, just, just be clear. Yeah. No, because I think that is really important. Just that is the problem seems to be too hard to <laughs> deal with the using the tools that we have. So, yeah, that's my opinion. Yeah, but then it's not quite spoiled. Because I think it's not the way that usually people think. 
but when you, even when you try to, <coughs> to recover the network, what you really are doing is uh, exactly you're fitting a model. Yeah, a fitting a model of a network. Right? So, usually you don't think, right? It's just a correlation. But actually, what you're doing, you know, is you're fitting. So, if you try just to recover the best. So if your aim is always to try to recover as best as possible, if it's true or not, yeah, what you will have, and actually it's funny, but what you will get is a situation of overfitting. Actually. So you try, you find too much actually <coughs> connection usually that actually doesn't exist at all. You know? So, but if you change the perspective a little bit, okay, if you if you fix this as a model and if you do a model selection procedure, what you will find actually in the end. Is a network that's actually best predict, and you actually what you usually you find is a network that is much more sparse than what you usually get just using correlation, this kind of method. So there is also this kind of problem that again, you know, when usually people find in the literature you know, correlation and make uh, draw a network, usually if, if the, the person that's trying to recover the network it was just thinking to try to recover the real one, probably that thing is over.
memory of everything that happened um, uh, before uh, its own uh, spike at a given time. Uh, so the potential, as I said, is given by all uh, the, the spiking uh, activity of other neurons in the network. Since the last spike of, of this, the same neuron, it's penalized by a leaking factor, which is which corresponds to the leaky current, uh, the leaky potassium, the potassium current, and it uh, it's it's um, it's weighted by the synaptic influence that uh, each neuron has over over, over that particular neuron. Um, so. <clears throat> Uh, the conditions of, uh, of current simulations, we are um, using a very simple, uh, a very simple framework, where we uh, fix fix the num number of uh, to total neurons in the network, and uh, we uh, assume that. Uh, we, we, we have uh, we, we've taken a very naive uh, uh, fu uh, for a function of uh, firing probability that group that is uh, uh, grows linearly with uh, neuron zone potential until it saturates at some point and we're also um, we're also studying in, in, in the in within the mean field interaction framework and the which means we assume that all neurons are, are connected to each other except itself, and uh, all, all uh, interactions, uh, all synaptic weights assume a, a mean value. Um, so this is... Why is you in the last slide? <laughs> there is the first one. So the probability of the neuron to spike this, this is a, a, a stochastic chain that assumes zero or one according to f firing or absence of firing, and uh, according to uh, it corresponds to uh, its dependency depends on the history of the, uh, the firing history of all, the, all other neurons, and uh, it's it's the, uh, the uh, function. Probability is the function of its own potential at that given time. What does that what does that potential really mean? It's just that the, the computation of this function? Yeah. Straightforward. Where does this come from? The, the this formula for the potential. So this is um uh, this well it, it will be clear late more clear later, but it's um has been inspired in discrete, um, discrete time versions of leaky integrate and fire neurons, but it, it becomes clearer later. And uh, so, in this, if you actually, if you, if you, do I have a, uh, no, I don't think so. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, You can just write it as the, the evolution of the potential as um, I'm using the same to use the same notation with the uh, time discrete time in the bottom here. So you can you can see the uh, evolution of Uh, it, 
potential, its potential goes to zero. And if a neuron doesn't fire, you, see, you can uh, see it that that particular instance, which neurons are influ influencing this, this neuron and, and weighted by the synaptic weights. And everything is penalized by this, by this um, leaking factor. Um, it's, um, it's very similar with, 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 uh, to, uh, to other, uh, other propositions of uh, leaking, integrate, and fire uh, in discrete time. And uh, there is this reference here. And, um, but it's, well, we can, we can discuss it later. Uh, uh, Islami has, has other uh, interesting ideas about it and um, but what's it's, it's it, it can't you can't actually compare it directly with an integrated fire model because its main its main assumption is that uh, neurons fire stochastically you don't have a threshold you, you can't you can't put a threshold so what I think it's what's what I think it's most elegant about this 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 uh, this model is that Many, 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 you, you can see, if you, if you really want to compare it with integrated fire uh, um, uh, uh, models, you can see that um, there are many attempts to, to introduce stochasticity into <coughs> to that kind of model, even, even if you, or, or integrated fire, or even like um, Hodgkin Huxley, or other kind of more realistic, uh, set, realistic models. Um, but you always have to choose some aspect to to, to impose where randomness is, is going to uh, is, is going to belong to either the uh, uh, the, 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 the channel uh, a specific channel or or noise and the, uh, yeah whatever you have to assume that noise is coming from somewhere and in our case. What's, what's, what, what I think it's beautiful about is you can you can think about really uh, sophisticated um, you know, firing probability functions, and we, we have a, this is this is a, a very important part of the of the work that Hawking and, and some, um, some other people in, in neuromath have been discussing. That you, what's very elegant is that you can uh, you can embed very sophisticated aspects of, of, of neuronal response in realistically in that, in that simple um, firing, uh, firing rate. Um, so here I simply, I simply um, put this in an algorithm, uh, 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 written as an algorithm. And uh, so, step by step, I simply, I simply uh, ch um, choose initial conditions, calculate the probability that each neuron will fire, generate a, a uniform distribution, and see which, which neurons fire at that specific time. And then I update uh, all, uh, uh, I update the, um, the uh, potential um, uh, potential values of each neuron that at that specific uh, instant of time, uh, according to this uh, according to this rule, of course. In, in this case, I'm assuming an average an average synaptic weight, and I'm assuming that leakage is a, the geometric function. Um, which um, this 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 actually is it's very economic and. Um, uh, I can in my own in my own machine have a regular Mac and uh, with uh, uh, eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, RAM memory, and I can simulate 10 million neurons in, in it. So it actually shows that the U is a vector, is a model G. Yeah. That's it. Um, yeah, but here it's it's kind of a, it's kind of a trick because in the original paper they wanna they wanna uh, uh, um, hold hold on to things that you can measure like zeros and ones and then you can measure the history of spiking. 
the system. This is uh, U is more of this. Uh, 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 it's more of um, ideal potential, right? something like that. So, in, 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 in if, if you if you don't know nothing about generating random uh, uh, distributions or nothing, you can simply think that I distribute a potential to all neurons, and then I'll attribute a coin to each neuron in the network. And each time step of the simulation, I'm going to toss, to toss every coin uh, corresponding to each neuron. Except these coins are not, uh, are not fair. They're not either, they cannot have, they don't have uh, a ha half probability of giving heads or tails. The probability of having a head which corresponds to a spike is, is it's that, that function phi of, uh, of the potential of that neuron at that instant. Oh, okay, let's see if this works. No? Hello? Hi? So this, this is an animus, animation just to illustrate uh, how, how we uh, simulate very simple simulation with no leakage of four, four neurons, just to see how it goes. So at first I start with all all neurons in uh, with z zero potential, <coughs> and then at some point I'm going to stimulate this neuron, make it fire, and subsequently this neuron will act uh, will give a little potential to all other neurons, and I'll toss all, toss the coins again. So this neuron that fire distributed a little more potential for these two, and it, this goes on and on and on. It's a very simple illustration. And um, as I said before, so this this uh, this is a, a simulation with a lot of neurons that I can do, and, and my in my in my computer in like ten minutes or something, and um, ten million neurons, and I set the the, leak, the leakage to uh, uh, I, I say that each neuron gives the other neuron about uh, one to the nth the uh, of synaptic stimulus, and um, each neuron is, is leaks uh, about 20% of its own potential at each given um, time step. <coughs> yeah, okay, so in step one, uh, uh, that red patch was uh, 10, 100 million neurons that I've, that I've simulated, and then you can see that they uh, distributed um, uh, potential to, to all other neurons, and since this this is a um, uh, uh, an all to all configuration, it, it, it quickly uh, spreads out, and you can see the the evolution in time of this of this um, of, of the firing rates of all neurons in this uh, that rep represented in in pixels here. Um, so I actually chose this representation because 10, uh, um, 10 to the seventh pow uh, power is about the same scale, about the same size as uh, all neurons in the in the mouse cortex. Um, and this this is the uh, the projection that I have printed from the Allen the Allen. Um, Alan brain map. So <coughs> what we want with this sim uh, with this simple sorry you're not here I wasn't sure okay um, uh, so what we're studying. So we're studying several aspects of this 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 model, and uh, we can we can try to understand the the, the, 
that there is a there is a very interesting interplay between uh, even in this simple configuration with a simple uh, 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 gain function, you can uh, sorry not gain function uh, simple firing uh, rate function. You can actually um, you can actually study the interplay between uh, leakage and and um, and, uh, and the <coughs> synaptic weight. And um, it's very interesting that we found uh, uh, evidence of a conjecture by, by <coughs> Galvez that um, we found, not professor, <laughs> um, we found uh, 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 evidence in the simulations that if you, given a, uh, if you give a certain uh, 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 synaptic wave that's fixed, um, uh, the um, actually if you have a small, if you have small leakage, the, uh, uh, the time of, of a, the time you have to wait for a system to die to observe the last spike of, the, of that that system, no matter how you simulate it, um, it's almost deterministic. And if you, but if you uh, if you increase, there's after a certain point. Uh, if you, if you, uh, sorry, if you increase that uh, that that parameter, that uh, this parameter, which is which means less leakage, right? If you, if you reduce leakage, you actually uh, this, the time of death begins to exhibit another completely different behavior, which is. Uh, uh, which follows a, a exponential distribution and depends on the number of neurons in the, uh, the small leakage, right? And um, so we found evidence of this. And, and also, uh, we are also uh, studying with, with Ozemi and Hockey and, uh, and other people that We've studied this this neuron, this 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 model, and uh, we found um, very interesting phase <laughs> transitions. And we start we started to explore. Uh, Zemi can can talk a little bit more about it. And we found very interesting uh, fa uh, phase transitions, uh, are ch changing the uh, in, a, in a systematic way with changing studying uh, the uh, probability uh, firing function. And um, you can see first order and second order phase transitions regarding to that. And uh, we also, uh, we also uh, uh, characterize the system in, in, in criticality. Uh, we've studied its behavior uh, of the behavior of Number of spikes and duration of avalanches in this in this in this network in the the critical regime, which is very cool because they can they can uh, uh, Zemi and I, I actually are very interested in in finding uh, uh, self-organized criticality in, in this in this network. <coughs> so so basically. Uh, uh, just in, just introduced a few of the, the research research interest that we have interest that, that we have about this model uh, right now and um, of course what I wish is to is to of course I think uh, everybody wishes to understand this understand the model better and uh, we are also, we are very eager to to make Make the, uh, the, uh, the model, make, to understand the, 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 the parameters involved in order to, to make it more realistic or whatever, but there's also this, this neat uh, fact about the, about the um, how, 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 much, how much we can complicate the, the we can also at the same time, maybe complicate the the model and not get n not get any richer, not make it any richer, so and more understandable or anything. So, 
that's that's the um, the whole basic scenario here. I don't, do do you want to complement the uh, me? the uh, yeah? No, me both them. They don't know. I, I think that the most important result that uh, in the shield is that uh, is that several phi functions, okay? Um, linear satur saturating, um, monomial. This is the gang, okay? Uh, one after the So, and there is another model similar uh, that there is no, there is no king okay? Sorry? Logistic. That's like logistic. It, it's a uh, maintenance kind. Uh, Starts with the U at, at the area here also. Okay. The important thing is that if it here keep on, there is a phase transition continuous. Here the, this the snaps, okay, or the average snaps. Here, in my notation of O is the, it's different, different of that O. It's about the density of active sites. The, density, the firing, the number of firing neurons. Okay, so it's the number of firing neurons here. Okay. So if there you is, have a density of firing neurons that is strictly positive, then you must, I mean, the stationary state of this chain actually is zero. Or here yeah. is zero. So you must be activating then as well. Do do After the transition, uh, the network has a uh, density of the uh, active neurons, okay? But, okay. but not, not synchrony. No. It's, uh, uh, that, that can be a quasi-stationary distribution, but it's not a stationary yeah. distribution. It's the only stationary distribution is, is everything zero. Okay, yeah. okay. But, <laughs> but, but it's the same <laughs> thing. For, for the physicists. For the there is something which is missing. These two guys there, uh, Aline Eduard and Gabriel and um, Guilherme Post, they had a theorem mm -hmm. which I read published, which says that for this model, the only equivalent situation is all zero, but moreover, the number of spikes is almost surely finite. And then the conjecture is, if you compare, it appears this year in zone of statistics, I guess. If you compare with situation for uh, uh, direct percolation uh, in a finite is volume. This is on a finite volume or infinite? This is a finite volume. So in a finite volume, uh, if you don't have external stimulus, uh, you start with uh, any uh, potential. So you have uh, the leaky effect. They proved for a system with electrical synapses, gap junctions, and leak effect. So the number of spikes is almost sure finite. 
then the natural conjecture I made, so they, they proved it. I, I'm not responsible for this paper. I didn't do anything. I just asked the question. You're the first Yes, no, I, I, I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> because Ludmilla did everything. So at most, this one is the middle. So I asked the question, is it true that the, as it is a case for direct percolation? For direct percolation, you have situation in which you put sons is a certain probability, or you die of probability. So if you are in a, for an Erdoshini model, correct Erdoshini, if you are in an infinite volume, you have phase transition in the following sense. If the probability of putting suns is smaller than a certain threshold, you die for sure. If it's bigger, you have a positive probability of not dying. Now you do it in a finite volume, so you must die, because <laughs> You, uh, this is a possibility, so you find you die. And then you can prove that you have a metastable situation when the probability of putting suns is very big. And, and this means that uh, you enter in a situation which seems to be stable, like the... Stable. Stable. It seems you do all the statistics you want, and the time it takes to disappear is unpredictable in a rigorous sense. That, I mean, it takes a time and you divide it by the expectation, it converges in law to an, expect, to, to an exponential amount of time. But this is very typical in a metastable setting. That's a metastable setting. Yeah. And so then, it converges to, to exponential is very typical. Yes. And then, uh, for, for, for if the probability of mm -hmm. B is small, then you disappear in a, in a time which is proportional to the number of sites. Mm -hmm. And if you divide the time of last spiking, of uh, the time to death, by expectation, it goes almost surely to one. So my question is, is it true for this model? And, but this is a much tougher question, because you, don't, you are not reaching a configuration. You, the time of last spike is not a stopping time. You don't know if this was your spiking time until, until you, uh, you go to the end of the time. So it's a much higher and then Ozami added a new question is what is going well, on with the critical my, 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 my result is for infinite infinite uh, systems. For infinite systems okay. you have a nice phase transition. Okay. Yeah. And for for uh, Greater than, than one, it's uh, we had always uh, it's a first order. First order, okay. For a less than one, <coughs> the critical point is zero, always, and it seems. Uh, Totally general, this result, and we, uh, we also study functions with a threshold. Okay? Threshold. Yeah. And, 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 and form an and, and expression for the, the function, okay? If you, you have a threshold, threshold greater than one, so it's continuous ambitious, always. So uh, up to now, uh, uh, we have these results to report in this, in, this in this paper. Is this simulation based? Uh, this no, the mean field calculation. Mean field. And it's compatible with simulation. Uh, uh, mean field analytical results and mean field numerical results. And the after simulations, so when you say only to check. Huh? System, you take a limit of n tending to infinity first. Yes. Uh, to, in a, yeah. in a mean field system. We, we do the simulation only to check, but the, the, the calculations are very, very simple and very, uh, very representative of the behavior. Uh, your simulation. I uh, with the 10,000 10, yeah. euros. So this is more of this second paper.
but it, this reminds me of uh, work that has been done recently on uh, the, uh, the contact process on how to wrap up. Contact process. Contact, contact process. process. Yeah. So th that's, a, that's a model for diseases. The spread of a disease where uh, you're being infected depending on, on, on your neighbors. So a vertex who is uh, healthy will infect its neighbors. And, oh sorry, uh, uh, an individual who's, who's ill will affect its neighbors, but he will also return uh, being healthy at some point in time. So that's a, that's a Markov chain, but in that sense it's a bit nicer than this. What? I could not have the given from the process two years ago. On the random track? No. Not on the random track. So there is recent work on that where you show that there is something like a quasi station, quasi critical value. Below this critical value, you die out in a logarithmic time, depending on the size of the network. And above it, it takes you an exponential amount of time to die out. What do you That's uh, Tom Manford and some of his PhD uh, students, uh, Daniel Palacin. And, uh, but so you really have a big jump in the time for the disease to die out. The disease will always die out because that's the only stationary distribution in this setting. Uh, but it either takes a logarithmic amount amount of time when you are subcritical and the disease basically dies out very quickly locally and the supercritical setting where somehow locally it wants to survive but of course it cannot because it's a quasi stationary distribution it's not the stationary so it reminds me a bit of that so it seems to us that uh, all, the, all these phase transitions uh, uh, um, occur because of the phi function. And the, the integrating fire models have not this function okay, in the late future. And uh, it seems that there is... Well, it depends on one, it's just a bit bigger and you put the noise, so... We must, we, we must check... Is, is, it, uh, huh? is integrating fire the same as the sand fire? The same as the sand fire, the median sand fire? No. 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 Well, this is a generalization somehow, because you have a more uh, flexible way with the problem. Is it possible to include in, in division? Is yes. It possible to include in yes, division? yes. There is, there is a physical review because letter. This, this is completely good, good question. Right? Good question. Good question. Yeah, yes. <laughs> there is a physical review letter uh, that is a limiting case of this, of this function. They use this function, but uh, there is no uh, there is no leak, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, more at, at all, and uh, in the in the last year, and they put uh, they put uh, in, in inhibitor neurons, okay? And they they found a behavior like this, no phase transition. I don't understand the. Uh, why? Because they use uh, R equal 1. I expected uh, a continuous phase transition, they, and they, they found that. Which is perhaps uh, I, I need to understand why. What the inhibitor of the own rate? Maybe to stop by inviting the to, to do the next step with the inhibition. <laughs> I have lots of very interesting problems of the processes within the system. Wait until Friday. <laughs> and all these problems I cannot solve. Well, that is very interesting. Joe Lebovitz has the following. You know Joe Lebovitz. Joe Lebovitz is a very, very important man. He is the father of all the group of the physical physicists. I guess include, include, including you and me. So all, all we few generations. Uh, well, but he influences uh, everybody. <laughs> he is the editor of the Journal of Statistics. And they have the following way to work. So, our rather than the laboratory, mm -hmm. she, she asked the question to how they think a lot that we solve the question. And uh, the next day, she arrived with the answer. And then they make a second, more difficult question. So, make a, she makes a report and arrive next day or two days with an answer. He makes a Third, more, until the point that she is not able 
to answer a testing question. Mm -hmm. And if you get you get mad with him because I, I did all this, but he wants to know wh where is really the bot. So you are like man enjoying the bot. <laughs> so should we st stop this this question and then to have a few fifteen minutes, maybe or ten minutes to hockey? Mm -hmm. It's up to you. Actually. It's up to you, yes. Okay, ten minutes, okay? Not for an hour or <laughs> no, no, not for an hour. Well, actually I have prepared a presentation which you did. I will uh, can I use your, your computer? How can I just have to Okay, so uh, just quick one then. Uh, so the thing is, well, the title, no? what are the mechanisms uh, responsible for the origin and characteristics of the ongoing activity of the brain at rest? So the brain, as we all know, has some ongoing activity even at rest without uh, external stimuli or any task. Uh, oh, by the way, that's the definition of this, oops, ongoing activity. The cortex is this place. Sorry? Is well, the, the default people who work on fMRI told us the default or say the ongoing state, but I mean, you can have cortical networks of any size that explain this, this behavior. Uh, so the fact that you have this say, sustained activity of the cortex uh, uh, without any external stimulation or behavioral tasks, this can, be, can happen uh, in vitro. You have to take slices, cortical slices, and then you, you just keep them alive for, for, for sorry. For, for hours, days, and then they, they, they keep firing for the time. Uh, in vitro cell cultures as well, so not real <coughs> tissue, but I mean, you grow cultures and they, they, they have this sustained, self-sustained spikes activity. You, you can say surgically separate slabs in, in, the, in, in, in the cortex and still keeping the blood supply, and then they still, I mean, so they're, they, they're, they're connected to the brain and they, they also exhibit uh, uh, self-sustained activity. You can have this uh, in under conditions in which you are essentially disconnected from the external world, but still, of course, you are embedded in the world. Uh, so like uh, in slow wave sleep or anesthesia, you can have this uh, uh, sustained activity, or SSA, as I call them. Or you can have then when you're, uh, say, just resting. That's the resting state. You're just doing nothing at home, resting, meditating if you want. And, and then you, you have, uh, as I say as well, uh, what are the, the features, what are the signatures of those uh, self-sustained activities? Well, for the in vitro and in vivo preparations for the slow wave sleep and anesthesia, they exhibit a slow, less than one hertz, and a high amplitude network oscillations. So as a whole, the collective network has very slow frequency and high amplitude. Uh, so-called up and down neuronal states are that in your neuronal level, neurons seem, they, 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 they have, they operate in two regimes if you want, uh, uh, high, uh, highly depolarized state close to a threshold and a hyperpolarized one in which they're really uh, inhibited if you want, or, or say, in a hyperpolarized state as we say in, in neuroscience. Or the resting state, which is the state in you are, say, at rest, uh, the, the, the characteristics is more like fast or say you have a whole, whole range of, of frequencies but higher frequencies than, than in, in vitro and then say sleepy or anesthesia and low amplitude. And the, the firing is irregular but not noise. 
Okay. I have to be very fast. I don't have okay. time. Oh yeah. No, but if you want, okay, you can. No, I was just gonna say what what do you mean by noise? Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, people say noise is before sunlight or just pure pure before sunlight. I, I think you, there's there's some slide here which shows that, but I mean, I have to really <laughs> rush. <laughs> So this is just I mean, for you to believe me. This is a cortical slice in vitro. So you have this. Uh, uh, this is the uh, local field potential, and this would be say intracellular recordings. So the, here you can see the up and down states, and uh, uh, high frequency. Uh, so sorry, low frequency, high amplitude uh, behavior. This uh, you can compare both awakens. Uh, uh, slow wave sleep, so here you can see also uh, high frequency, low amplitude here, low frequency, high amplitude. The up and down states are, say the down states are here, indicated in gray, so the uh, moments in which the neurons uh, don't fire. This is the rust plots of multi-unit uh, multi uh, extracellular spike activities. Uh, so you have, uh, so depending on the situation, you have different uh, signatures of this. Uh, self-sustained activity, but they are there. Uh, experimental evidence, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm quoting, say, two <coughs> papers, so ongoing cortical activity is far from being just noise. Noise in the sense that uh, in the past, you know, people uh, studied the brain by throwing some stimuli into the brain and observing the response, as if the brain was just, uh, say, doing nothing uh, when it was at rest. It's like, like in the resting state, physical systems would be, say, driven by noise. If you were in the, say, ground state, usually a ground, physical system in a ground state can exhibit some fluctuations as if it, a noise, noisy setting. But uh, the brain, when it is at rest, is not like, 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 like that. I mean, the, the, the resting state of the brain is doing something. It's not just a pure noise. What it is doing, people don't know. Perhaps you know better than me, but I mean, we don't know. This is an, an, an also, an, an open question. What is the ongoing state? What does we do? What do we do when we are at rest? This is a, 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 one of the open questions uh, at, that I'm going to put at the end. Uh, well, this, so this is more or less common view from the past, say, 20 years uh, from now. So uh, the, the, the brain is not really uh, a noisy system when it is at rest. It's, it's, it has some, some features there which are not... Uh, noise. Uh, some signatures of neuron firing, so low firing rates, no Gaussian, firing rate distribution, so more like a log dome, or if you want. Uh, in general, well, yeah, the computer, Ludmilla's computer has all this configuration, but uh, so inhibitory cells tend to fire at higher rates than excitatory cells. Uh, so inhibitors neurons have larger. Uh, here again, you have awake and anesthetized. So the, again, you can see the local field potential, which is a kind of collective signature. You have uh, uh, low frequency, high amplitude. Here, high frequency, low amplitude. From different regions in the brain. Uh, irregular firing. So here, uh, you actually have, uh, I mean, uh, large repertoire of, of spiking or firing behavior for single neurons if you want. Some of them look like Poisson, some of them are more regular. So you have a distribution of, of firing rates. Sorry, yeah. You can't have a Poisson distribution if there's a discharge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, they are like Poisson, like, but yeah. yeah. But, uh, I'm just quoting them. Yeah, this yeah. is my own, and sorry, very famous paper. But then the, 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 the black uh, histogram here is just bad sorting. Yeah, yeah, but uh, okay. It's uh, the point is that you have a distribution of firing rates uh, of, of inter, uh, inter spike intervals, which uh, in principle should be fit by model. If you want to construct a model, you would have to you try or attempt to reproduce uh, uh, distributions like this. And you see, they are different from say one neuron to another one. You have differences. What's the distribution? Correspond to interspiking intervals that have that's an exponential, exponential. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, which seems yeah, that's okay that's why part, yeah, but maybe not in the top. Yeah, yeah not this I'm one would say look like. I'm saying that for a single neuron, it's not possible because you have a refractory curve. Okay. Yeah, well, then yeah, you you have a cut here, of course. 
it's not like a pure croissant like, but the, 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 the tail would be say croissant like. So that's why they say some of some fire with croissant like irregularities, some other don't fire with croissant. Yeah, that's it. You have to cut off that. So but then, then if you go to people who work on FMI, they also refer to ongoing state, as you, you refer initially. Then there you see that people say that uh, uh, the bold FMI, they have uh, these rest state networks, which are networks <coughs> which are active when you're at rest. It's a set of neurons are widely uh, uh, separated uh, in the brain, and they have low frequencies. But this is not frequency in terms of firing. Some people will sometimes confuse it's frequency in terms of uh, fluctuation of the of, uh, uh, blood uh, flow. So in the, in the signal, in the signal that is the, that, that, that is measured by them, and uh, one of those resting state networks is the default mode network, to be the, the one which is active when you are meditating. But uh, there are other ones which correlate uh, strongly with, uh, say, sensory mode or visual auditory and other uh, uh, networks which are associated to different tasks. Uh, so you can see here some representative modes, and you can see these low fluctuations in the signal. That they, so it's more like a, hydro, a hydrodynamic signal, and not an electro, electrical s signal from the brain. So the two measures are different, because they, of course, they are based on different techniques. Uh, so some questions uh, would be: the, What are the mechanisms responsible for the existence of those of the spike in activity in the cortex without external input? Do they? depend on the structure or organization of the cortical connections. So the structure is the recipient where, I mean, which houses all the neurons. Does it influence the behavior? Uh, do they depend on the, sorry, do they depend on the intrinsic characteristics of cortical neurons? Because neurons behave in different ways. They have different uh, uh, electrophysiology. Uh, they belong to different electrophysiological classes. Uh, what are the mechanisms that make neuronal spiking irregular but not Random. What is the, ra the relationship between electrophysiological and fMRI measures? So, like the, the two, when, when people say if you are at rest, you have the uh, high rate, high frequency measure uh, via, say, electrophysiological uh, recording techniques, e.g., local field potential, whatever. And fMRI, you have uh, say very low frequency, so there should be a way of coupling that. This is another open question for modelers. Uh, just very quickly, I still perhaps have two or three minutes. Uh, people have tried to explain that and say classical hypothesis in the, terms, in the context of neuroscience, which is a very young subject. So for a very young subject, something that was proposed at the say, end of last century is already classical. So the brain works on a balanced state in which they had, say the, the global excitatory input to a neuron more or less uh, 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 is balanced by the global inhibitory input to a neuron. There's much less uh, inhibitory uh, neurons in the brain, in the cortex, than in the uh, than excitatory cells. Uh, so the inhibitory uh, coupling should be stronger. So the strength of the inhibitory synapses should be stronger, and they balance each other. And in this case, the brain would be, say, driven by by the fluctuations, by noise. So this is a classical hypothesis that Van Andres Weick, I don't know whether I pronounced it correctly, and Sampoliski have put up, yes. put forward some uh, 20 years ago. Uh, and then the classical implementation of this hypothesis in terms of a simulation is uh, a work uh, consisting of a random network, so a erdos rheny network with 80% of excitatory neurons, 20% of inhibitory neurons, sparse connectivity, integrated fire, which has been the default single neuron model for, say, the, the classical era of, of neural modeling, if you want. Uh, inhibitory synapses is stronger than excitatory synapses, uh, but some, some external stimulus apply to neurons. So they don't uh, isolate the entire network from the rest of the world. They still have to provide some uh, external stimulus, otherwise the, the, the system would, say, exhibit uh, self sustained activity only for a, a limited time. So, uh, say, a classical implementation of this is the work by Nicolas Brunel uh, in 2000. So, by studying the, the, the ratio of the coupling between inhibition and excitation and the, the strength of the excitatory input, he was able to obtain different regimes. One of them is the AI or a synchronous irregular regime, which is, say, the kind of behavior that, yeah, I know, but uh, yeah, just two more minutes uh, uh, that would be exhibited by the brain. 
Uh, here, you know, the classical work by Tolkien and Abbott, the same behavior. What I'm claiming here that we have to go beyond the classical models, so study network models with uh, networks which are more realistic, more realistic neuron types as well. Uh, so by more realistic, we have to rely on data from anatomists and physiologists, like people from, like, uh, uh, Binziger et al., who have uh, provided, say, very detailed study on the connections, anatomical connections, and Thompson et al., who also have worked on physiological. Perhaps we're going to learn more about this during the week. Hope. Uh, this is for microscopic level. So when we want to uh, model the brain, we have to consider this difference of scales. We have a lot of detailed knowledge about the anatomy at the microscopic level. We have some knowledge about the, the, the connectivity at the macroscopic level. They come from other techniques. This is a, a classic work by Van Essen and his group on the, uh, the areas related to vision, visual processing. Also, have the, has been mentioned today the, the uh, data from uh, the, uh, diffusion uh, tractography and all the techniques related to fMRI, which have shown the connections between major areas of the brain. So, in that case, you have modular and hierarchical, but you only have, say, 100 nodes, more or less. In this case, here, you have, uh, say, 100,000 which is the number of neurons in a, in a, in a, in a local sequence of the brain of that order, 100,000 neurons. Uh, going to the cortical neurons, you know, cortical neurons have, uh, as they call, different personalities. They, be, they, have, they, be, they behave in different ways. You have some bursting neurons, uh, have some regular spiking neurons. You have adaptation, so you have different types of behavior. In general, people say that the five or six main electrophysiological classes uh, in the brain. Some of them are excitatory, some of them are inhibitory. Uh, so how to model them? So this is a classical graph by Izikevich showing different uh, single neural models that one can choose to, to construct a, a network. Uh, the Galvez and Lorchabar is not here because, I mean, this is older, but uh, perhaps probably Galvez and Lorchabar would be, say, in terms of implementation costs, a very uh, efficient one. We still have to, to fiddle with the model to make it, say, <coughs> Uh, reproduce in a better way all those all those firing models that we have. We are working on that. Probably we'll have to work on the phi here uh, and we'll have to make it adaptive so we can say reproduce different behaviors. Uh, but then we have some some non-classical models, some recent models uh, which incorporate all the, the details that I mentioned. So like uh, Potchins and Dismond have recently proposed a model, very detailed model for a cortical uh, microcircuit, one millimeter uh, in size, composed of excitatory inhibitor cells organized into layers and uh, connected in a very realistic way, Implement, based on the data by Binziger and Thompson at all, and they, they, they provide uh, uh, data which can be compared. Uh, they uh, are implemented again, the balanced uh, network hypothesis of Andrzej Zweig and Sopolinsky, uh, which Brunel has tested in a random or Erdogeni network setting, but they, they implemented the same hypothesis in, in a layer network, and they observed the same, uh, behavior which is similar to behavior which is observed, like uh, inhibitory neurons that have higher fire rates and excitatory neurons, and many other things that uh, you can go to the paper. This is a paper by me and some collaborators in Germany. We are working on a, a model for, let's say, mesoscopic or macroscopic network level, which is a, a modular and hierarchical uh, network. So it has modules there. Uh, and in that model, we have, say, up and down states. The model is... Is, like is Sorry? Is that like a block it's not a stochastic, but we, we plan, when we intended to add, to put some stochastic neurons there. But the single neural model that we use here is Ekevich's. So it's a... a it's a kind of uh, quadratic integrate. The network, yeah, the network is generated in that say way, what you call top-down way. We started with a network Rene, and then we divided it into two modules, and then we, uh, with a probability of 100%, we we delete all the inhibitory connections from one say module to another one, and we rebate it to the same module where they where it is, and. Uh, probably 10%, we uh, we delete all the excitatory connections and rebate to the original model, but we keep some 10% of them, so we have some intermodular connections, excitatory ones, long-range connections. And then by repeating these, we can generate networks of different, uh, say, hierarchical or modular 
uh, levels. Uh, we use this Isikevich model with a quadratic integration fire model with adaptation. So it's a two variable model, but <laughs> deterministic. Uh, and by doing that, we can observe, uh, say, up and down states. This is the activity of uh, the network frequencies, which are higher than the ones which are observed experimentally. So this is more or less in the theta band, not exactly as, as, as measured, but uh, we can adjust with uh, Fernando, who is here, we're working on, and Fernanda, the two Fernandos, we're working on a different model. And by, by increasing the size of the network, just by increasing the number of neurons, we can, say, have, say, more realistic frequencies, uh, and all the distributions, and so on, so we can have a look at it. So this is just to, I mean, just to motivate some questions. So what the contributions can we give to these issues? So how can we, say, model the sustained activity that the portals <coughs> exhibit? in different, say, how, even the question of how can we model the, the, the sustained activity that a cortical tissue exhibits for a, a long time. I mean, it's not the real brain, but it's a piece of cortex that was taken from the cortex and generates some behavior. Uh, so it's a network there which can be investigated. Does this have anything to do with a stochastic model like the galvez rochabar model that we are studying here? Uh, another open question. How can we, say, couple this to a model of the uh, bone effect in the brain to, to, to be able to reproduce, say, both electrophysiological and, and fMRI uh, uh, measurements and have this in a single model? How, how, how can we, say, go from a microscopic model to a macroscopic one, so including a mesoscopic one? Many other groups in the world are doing this, like uh, the, world, the people in Ulich, uh, for example, are doing that, but uh, we hear have the same intention, and but uh, we were to use the stochastic model that we have been discussing here. But I mean, all of those questions would be interesting questions for us to discuss this week. That's my contribution, my two cents <laughs> for this. <laughs> okay. Thank you.